Hello you. It's that time again. That's right, it's time for another enema of stupid, useless gaming knowledge and fictitious rubbish with good old me in this week's Retro Rambles. And I want to apologise to those of you who were waiting for a teaser on Friday or Saturday, as I promised in the end of last week's video. But the truth was, I couldn't think of anything. It wasn't until Arcade Club on Saturday night, hi, by the way, uh, until I thought of this game because me and my daughter who is today's special cameraman say hello daughter hello she's right behind the camera give the camera a wave of your hand see isn't she good uh we were playing this together and yeah the more literate of you will have noticed that that is ikaruga because that's today's game now ikaruga for those of you who don't know is a bullet hell game and now I've got to tell you what bullet hell is, probably. Okay, bullet hell is... Well, it's been around since the dawn of arcading, really. 1942 could be seen as a bullet hell game, potentially. Well, it, either way, bullet hells are the successor of games like 1942. And that one I can never say with all the X's in. And what happens is, is you're a little chap in your ship or whatever at the bottom of the screen and everything and it's mum's trying to kill you it's mental but you get the biggest and most ridiculous upgrades to your weaponry there's one that I have played and again the title completely goes from my mind uh, it's very anime style a lot of them tend to be odd enough Ikaruga doesn't seem to be drawn in a particularly anime style uh, but there is this one it's very colourful and the weapons you have on your ship is so immense it takes up the entire screen. You fire and that's it. Wumpf. You know, it's... But the game is... That game in particular is pretty impressive because the frame rate doesn't slow down or anything. Anyway, back to Ikaruga. Released, I believe in 2001, by a little company called Treasure. And famously... Well, maybe not famously, but... Yeah. Sod it, famously. Uh put on the Dreamcast uh, and it didn't it turned up on the Xbox 360 and I think it's on PS3 I'm not sure about that I have it for the Xbox one because it's backwards compatible because uh, me and Kay love it don't we yes. yes it's fantastic now face off the camera face behind the camera what would you say Ikaruga would you say Ikaruga is drawn an anime style not really sorry no. 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 Sorry if you can't hear it, but we're just we're just messing around. We don't have two cameras. I'm not that rich. Not cameras. I mean I microphones. I'm, I'm telling them because they'll get confused and start crying. There's nothing more pathetic than watching your audience cry. Anyway, I did a bit of research into the creation of Ikaruga, and when I say research, I mean made it all up. No, I did research it. This is really what happened. Honestly, enjoy the story of the creation of Ikaruga. Hey, I wonder what the story is behind the creation of Ikaruga, asked nobody ever until now. Well, I'm going to tell you, well, my interpretation of what happened. So we're going to go all the way back to 1999, and you probably think it started with these Charlies. It doesn't. It starts with something else, something a little bit closer to home for us UK people. And we're just going to sit and wait now for all the people who are listening to the Sega jingle from Sonic the Hedgehog in their heads. And now we're going to have to wait for all the people who've just had the idea put into their head by me mentioning it a second ago. Are we done? Marvellous. Let's crack on. So yes, it doesn't begin with Sega. It begins in the UK with these guys. That's right. Guide Dogs for the Blind. They created one of the best bullet hell games ever. Well, kind of. Sort of. Shut up. This is what happened. They were looking for new ways of fundraising. Because their traditional ways of fundraising, which was... Tin shaking on the high street, car boot sales, bake you know bake sales at church fairs, and their more traditional methods of fundraising, which are armed robbery and extortion, they just weren't bringing in the shekels anymore. So they went to their new department of guerrilla fundraising, and these two gentlemen, who were ahead of said department, and their names were Trevor and Simon, and they had an idea of how to make money, money, money by making a game, and they knew about this new console, the Dreamcast! So they thought, I know, 
we'll ring Dreamcast and ask them to make us a game. So they did, and they rang Dreamcast and said, can you make us a game? And Dreamcast said, no, I'm a console. And furthermore, how have you called a console? I'm an inanimate object, I can't answer the phone. And further, furthermore, I'm not even the console. I'm the logo. See? There you go. I'm the logo. How have you phoned me? You can't phone me. I can't even use the phone. You want to phone these guys. So the guide dogs do that. They go, okay, we'll phone them. So they phone Sega, and Sega say, what do you want? And they say, we want a game. We want a game, and it's got to be good. And we want to raise money for guide dogs. And Sega says, okay, it's going to cost you five billion trillion pounds. And as you can imagine, they weren't happy, because they didn't have five billion trillion pounds. So they had to think about it, and what they could do. And they went, I know. We'll go and ask a company to sponsor our game. See if they'll give us the five billion trillion pounds. So who can we go to? I know, what about that dog company, or not dog company, but dog food company that gives all the food away, free, sort of. You can Uber, and you can see where this is going, can't you? Yeah, don't worry, it'll be over soon, sorry about that. So they do that, they phone you can Uber and say, excuse me, can you give us some money so we can make a game? Uh, and it's actually going to be a lot of money, it's going to be five billion trillion pounds. And you can Uber say, hang on a minute. Let me ask you this, why do you need us to give you five billion trillion pounds to make a game to raise money when the money you raise is probably only going to be a tenth of what we're going to give you? And the guide dogs say, we'll tell you why, shut up, that's why, Are you, will you do it? And you can Uber say, you know what, we were up for a laugh, we'll do it, but the game has got to be named after us. And the guide dogs go, you know what, that's fine. So they write it down on a piece of paper to send off to Sega. And unfortunately, dogs don't have opposable thumbs. And the handwriting was appalling. So when it got to Sega, it, well, let's just say, that's why it's called Ikanuga. Sorry, Ikaruga. See, I can't even say it right. And that's kind of what happened. Maybe. Probably. Bye. So there you go. You know, I never did find out how much money guide dogs made from it. Or if they made anything from it. Or did you canubra just go, nah, mine. After they in invested 500 billion trillion dollars. Pounds, even. <laughs> into a Karuga. Uh One of the things I forgot to include in last week's video, much to my profuse apologies and stupidity, was game footage. Uh, but you'll be pleased to know, I'm going to show you a bit of Ikaruga in a minute, because... It will explain more, any better than anything I could say. But what I will tell you is this, is you are your little ship, and you're bopping along, doing Ikaruga things. Ikaruga, by the way, is the name of the ship, or one of the ships that you're flying. Uh, and you have this rather unique ability. You have a button that you can change your colour from black to white, and vice versa. And you're thinking, all right, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, if you're a colour... You can deflect. Now, I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? Which one is it? Is it if you're white, you deflect black? Or is it you deflect the colour you are? Yeah, you deflect the colour you are. That's right. When you're white, the button, you, you, you can't get hurt by white weapons. And when you're black, vice versa. And the, your enemies come at you in these two variations. And you can have bosses that are one is black and one is white. And they mix it all up. And you're like, ah! Anyway... There you go. Have a look.
So there you go. That's footage of old Ikaruga. And it is a lot of fun. It was released on the Dreamcast, as I said. Uh, and in the arcade, it ran off GD-ROM. Which is interesting, because with it running off the GD of a GD-ROM, which is a disc, by the way, <laughs> it has a bit of a unique problem that we discovered once at Arcade Club. You can break it. And you can break it with style. It's like, <laughs> gone. Because uh, me and Kay were playing it, and we were doing really well. We were just storming through it. And we got to this level, and it just went, no! No, not playing. Don't want to play. You're mean. You go home. And we were like, uh, but we're playing. That's not very nice. <laughs> Um, we, we broke Ikaruga. We, we were actually thinking of having t-shirts printed saying we broke Ikaruga. <laughs> I love this game. I absolutely love this game. I've been I've played it for years. I had it on the Dreamcast in the in the early noughties, and I have it for my Japanese Dreamcast as well. In fact, it came with my Dreamcast. I but I was given my current Dreamcast as a birthday present by uh, my good friend John who some of you will remember from the future is a con video from October last year and he bought me a Japanese Dreamcast and it had all these games and it had a Karuga and it's the Japanese version of course and it's brilliant it is just such a great game the music is wonderful you can't really hear it over all the explosions and the profanity because you keep dying because it is a wonderful profanity generator you do use lots of F's, and even the odd C. Cretin. See what I did there? I built uh, you, your dirty mind. You went straight for that word, didn't you? you? You went straight for the word cucumber, honestly. And I'm not usually a fan... Well, no. It's not that I'm not a fan of bullet hell games. It's a case of... I find them difficult, because there's that much going on. But Ikaruga just gets me it's wonderful absolutely love it i can play it for hours uh i do like on the xbox one because obviously you can't mash the continues like you can on arcade club's machine uh you you that's it computer and program you die you're dead back to the beginning oh that's mean i hear you cry but you know what sick biscuit disintegratum I'm not telling you what that's Latin for. Anyone who, again, who knows me, let's stop using it. I might, have t I might actually have T-shirts with that printed on. Anyone who knows me well, catchphrase T-shirts and sell them. <laughs> Money making. I like that idea, actually. Right. I think that's pretty much it. I've just talked twaddle about a game for a good few minutes, showing you a bizarre video involving two dogs named after going live uh, presenters. And uh, my daughter's kind of whimpering and thinking, Oh my god, people actually watch this. Yes, they do. They're called masochists. And that's it. Uh, I have got an idea for next week's video already. Uh, I will post something in the next couple of days. I promise this time I really will. Scouts on it. I'll also be posting in the next couple of weeks the first trailer. I know it's posh for me. Trailer. Aren't I good? Of. An upcoming series. Uh, those of you who watched and I hope enjoyed my Elite series will be pleased to know I have two series planned for this year. Uh, because I've got to, you know, these are games I wanted to do. The second series, unfortunately, due to personal problems, uh, I'm, after, I'm struggling with uh, because the person, well, you, if you know, you know. Uh, but hopefully. Oh, that might sort itself out, I don't know. Anyway, I will be putting that off because I want to do that do really big on that. But the first series will be some, hopefully starting in June. And I would like to run the second series at the end of the year. I've also got a special coming up sometime very soon, hopefully. Started working it already. Uh, which is covering a book, a movie and a game all based on the book and it's not hitchhikers that would be too predictable and that video will go on do you know what i might do that one week anyway that's it i'm going uh thank you for watching i hope you stuck through to the end and if you have 
well done you can have a prize you get to watch another video next week so till t so till next wednesday i shall bid you adieu and say goodbye daughter bye daughter she's off <laughs> all right kids i'll be back next week i hope you've enjoyed the video take it easy and stay tuned for another ramble Terra.